Good morning, and welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. So today we will not have our pro spec list. Uh, the surprise from that is that we will be live this Thursday with the pro spec list at 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. So for the following presentation, we have Ghostbook. Thank you for joining us tonight um, for another edition of Books You Can't Buy Anymore. Um, I'll say it again. That's a little bit tongue in cheek. Everything's available for sale. Uh, but we put together a list of ghosts um, uh, from the crew that we've um, either aware of or hunted ourselves. And uh, this is a pretty fun list. So uh, we're just going to we're going to we're going to we're going to roll with it. Um, just have some fun tonight and let's jump right into it. Before we get started, a bunch of the books on the list tonight are from from Ben Stein. Um, he is one of uh, the smartest guys I know for, for, for really, really tough to find books. Uh, so uh, if I do, don't do justice to some of these, um, it's because they're his books and, you know, I'm completely unaware of them. So here we've got Die Kitty Die number one. Uh, this is a one in 25 cook variant. Um, the last 9.8 sale that we saw for this book um, was back in 2020 for $150. And um, there are eight on the census. Just for tonight, I've changed my format here. When you see eight of eight, so eight slash eight, that means there's eight 9.8s and a total of eight books. Um, so it's, when you're looking at that, the first number will be the nine eights. The second book will be the total that CGC had listed. Okay. Um, so th th this is a book that I was completely unaware of. Um, we certainly know Dan, Dan Parent, who did... Um, um, who's the artist of this book, not this cover. He does a lot of the stuff for, uh, for Archie. Um, but, um, but, but this is one of those books that you may have seen out there and had no idea that uh, it was actually sought after or rare. Um, that's the fun thing with this list is that a lot of these books you may see in the wild because people aren't even aware that they're rare or ghosts. Um, but uh, this is one of Stein's picks. Yeah. Never and seen this book. Yeah, and the thing about Stein too is like he has like the Carter magic or something. Like he can find those books like in the dollar bins like all day. Like I mean, I know he travels a lot, but still, like he still has that magic touch or something. Well, um, he always has a feel. For no, it, it's right? because he's, he travels. He doesn't yeah, have the magic traveling. touch. He just because he travels. But yeah, you know, but still. <laughs> anybody who hunts playing. books, you get a feel for how rare something is, right? Just having looked for it and not being able to find it, you just begin to get a feel for, for certain books. And, uh, and he definitely has that. So, uh, but he finds them because he looks all over the country for real. So he's got, he's got a pretty good pulse on, on what's going on. Um, all right. The next book. All right. So this book blew me away and we, we, we we've seen some talk about this book recently. Uh, Tony asked that we put this book on the list. We put this list together a few weeks ago before this book, was being talked about as much as it is currently. Um, this is the Varegi, Varegi 1 in 25 variant. The last raw sale that we saw of this was, uh, at least when I put this together, was almost $540 for a raw, right, um, at the end of July. Um, there are eight uh, 9.8s on the census, a total of 11 copies on the census. Um, <laughs> I, I, the last 9.8 sale, believe it or not, was for 26 bucks uh, wow. back in 2019. Um, so, so somebody's kicking themselves a little bit. And uh, and this book had about uh, 41,000 copies ordered in total. So one in 25 is about four percent of that. But but keep in mind, right? And I and I, and I want to point out this math to people is that it's not 4% of that total number because you have 2000 comic shops, right? So on average, 2000 comic shops are ordering about 20 copies each. Um, so they weren't all qualifying for this. And right. even, if, even if they ordered 30, they only get one. Um, so, so, so be very careful when just taking the ratio by the total number, there's likely not going to be that many out there. Uh, but I love this cover. I, I've been looking for this book ever since I was made aware of it and I'll probably never get it, but um, it's badass. I really, really like this book. It just looks like a, a piece of art, you know? I mean, like it looks like expensive art it, is such, it's so unique. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I love this notion, right? Cause you I mean the whole Egyptian theme, 
yeah. um, for Moon Knight, right? That, that you know, th there were hieroglyphics of the character, right? right? And, and then that, that's really what we're looking at here. And uh, um, anyways, I, I just think it's, uh, I think it's super cool. I like, uh, yeah, is it pronounced Faraji? Or Faraji, 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 maybe, yeah. yeah Jeffrey I, Faraji? Faraji? Okay. Yeah, he's doing a lot of the indigen um, indigenous uh, sorry, I can't. Covers. I cannot. Yeah, I cannot pronounce that word. But uh, a lot of those um, those covers recently, um, most of them are open order. I know it's not, uh, you know, the uh, exact taste for most comic book collectors or artists enthusiasts. But he has his own. Uh, I guess you could say uh, Native American artist writer twist on it, and I think it's absolutely. I think the uh, the covers are absolutely cool. I think this one in particular is actually probably one of his best covers. So great find. Wait, it, it yeah. really shows you his range of his art. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Because yeah, the, the, the current take, um, like a historical piece and like almost and like replicate it. So yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Next on the list we've got, uh, and I believe this was also another, um, Stein pick, and I was blown away because I swear I've seen this book before, but apparently not. Uh, Dave Johnson, one in 25. This is Batman 66, number five. Um, a one in 25. Uh, this book had 27,000 copies ordered, um, which, which is relatively small when you start to get into ratios, right? We've talked about this formula in the past, but when you start to see numbers drop into the 20s, in these higher ratios, most people aren't reaching them. And this is certainly the case for this book. Um, there were the last sale we saw was in 2015, mm. right? Look at that 2015 for 180 bucks, right? Um, you know, that's uh, that's six years ago. Um, there are seven nine point eights on the census, 14 total copies. Um, so so this is uh, very much the definition of a ghost, right? Um, um, you're not going to see this book out there, um, but uh, uh, but it could be one that maybe someone's got um, in their variant bin marked for ratio. Who yeah. knows? But if you come across it, um, you know these are the kinds of things that 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 that, that, are, that are fun to chase. Um, you know, I think when you really get into this hobby, um, finding things that are unique and super scarce, it really gets you excited. A, a lot of times. It's not, and I would say most of the time, it's not about the value of the book, but it's the scarcity of the book that really attracts us to, to, to some of these. And, um, and, 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 and because people aren't aware of them, you know, they, they may be out there for, for fair prices. Um, not on eBay, most likely. If they, if they pop up, they're gone. Um, but, but maybe at, at, at your LCS or, um, or somebody else's LCS. See, I would never guess. I would never guess that this is a sought after rare book. I mean, Thank you for this list. That's a, that's. I mean, I don't know if I've ever passed this. I've never seen this book. It's never brought to my attention. But thank you for bringing this to my attention. This is so sick. So it's another know, Stein book, right? So this book, this list has a lot of con, a lot of books from Stein. Um, um, he's super good at this stuff. Um, so um, I'll give him credit and all the books that I remember that he put on the list. So, um, yeah. But uh, oh, you got to think, you know, well, when Batman uh, sixty six came out, I mean, everybody probably just wanted issue one. Possibly they bought issue two, uh, but like when you get to five, I I mean, I can't see uh, stores ordering ten copies of issue number five. I mean, can right. you? I right, mean, and then, and then that, that's a good thing to keep in mind if you, if you would like to hunt rare books, right? issues you know certainly three and on if you're going to get one in 25 ratios for, for, for a lot of these books for 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 not super popular titles um the you know the, they're they're going to get harder and harder to come by so uh just something to have in the back of your mind um when you're out there looking for, for books but um you know th this one certainly fits that formula that we've talked about many times on on, on this segment uh, one other thing I want to add real quick, um, you know, you were saying like when you start starting to hunt like these ghosts and scarce books, I think it's also really fun. Like if it's a character that you enjoyed or even got you into the hobby, yeah. like it's fun to reflect back onto that and then find those super rare books that, you know, not many people have. 
Yeah, no, it makes the it makes the, it makes it really personal and uh, and rewarding. And it, and, I, and I think you know if if you're only doing speculation for for the economic aspect of it, um, you know you can get burnt out. It gets a little bit hollow. Yeah. But but finding you know real gems like this kind of keeps keeps you young, keeps it fun. Yeah, and on top of that, there's not a lot of Batgirl you know, speculation or investment besides the older stuff. And I think this is a really cool Batgirl cover, Um, you know, just to back it up. um, What I was just saying is, is that, you know, there was recent news that Batgirl was either casted or um, talked about being played in an upcoming DCU movie. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and then, like you said, the scarcity brings more, I guess you could say more base to the, uh, to the long-term value to it so yeah i, I like this book no I, th- I think ben you're right you know when you're digging through long boxes at, at lcs's uh you know aside from the obvious you know pay attention to something like this because it, it could definitely be out there in in, in back issue bins i mean that is it's very possible all right um all right so this this book um is uh <laughs> is is mine and i've got to thank uh, mighty mel v because i hunted for this book without even a sniff of it and 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 mel happened to have an extra one um that he sent me so this is um a jeff to call um a ratio variant a one in ten um there's no sales data um in the 9.8 for this book there's none no copies on the census wow um, my copy is not for long <laughs> my, my copy's around here somewhere. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I did with it. it. It's getting ready to go in. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Um. Um. So th- this book was not heavily ordered by anybody, right? I mean, I'm not sure how many people were actually qualifying for for ten copies of this book. Most most local comic shops didn't order any of them. Um. But um. It's uh, it, It's beautiful. It's really stunning. There's something about this cover that that really resonates with me and um um so so I, i'm happy to have it i looked high and low i reached out to the publisher couldn't find wow. it. <laughs> that's um, pretty good yeah um so uh and they admit that this is probably one of the calls rarest books uh because this is issue number two a one in ten on a super indie publisher and this book is is very very hard to even look in back issue bins for because there's no guns the gun section because they they only went three issues. Um, you have to look in sort of the random G's to have any hopes of maybe finding anything. So really hard to hunt for a book like this. But um, what year did uh, this come out? This can't. This is like 2016, I believe, was the wow. um, well, when this ran. And, Cre- and Creature Entertainment was way ahead of the time these guys did some really cool stuff um mel is a huge fan um i became a fan of what they were doing because of the call um and i was sort of chasing down some of his work um the forgive me father book that we've talked about many times obviously came out from them um maybe my favorite modern book at this point um but um but i can i can i can assure you guys that this is a ghost because uh, (laughs) <laughs> I can't even believe that I have it. I couldn't even get a whiff of this book anywhere. Dude, it's it's a badass cover. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And man, Mel's a great dealer. You know, the first one's free, but the next one, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dude, this, 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 one, this one didn't end up being free. Aaron. Yeah, I was, I was just joking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mel. Yeah, yeah, she's good good books, man. Man. But uh, we're even. We're even. Um, Shout out to Mel. He's really good like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mel's the salt of the earth, man. Um, great guy. And a huge, 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 huge personality and just a supporter of, of this hobby. Um, yeah, great, great, great guy. Um, yeah, definitely a person I look up to. Like, yeah. when I when I got onto, like, podcasting and all that, like, you know, he invited me on, gave me a shot, and I was like, yes. And then, you know, it, it's just crazy what this, like, you know, the opportunities that you run into and then like where it takes you. Well, don't yeah. let him fool you. He he's, he's got s- sneaky attention. He he'll play like, you know, 
it's all good. Every oh, okay, you know, but he is watching and he all he I don't know, his taste is just I don't know, his spec is yeah, he's good. Super savvy, man. Like his, hell, he, oh, yeah. he comes off like he's just a fun loving guy, but he's a super savvy. Yeah, speculator. totally, man. Really totally. good eye, and somehow has has every book. Like I don't understand how many comics he's <laughs> behind, but... he has the right books, yeah, and that oh, tells yeah. you how smart he is. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. You know, he's, he's one thing around, is, been around about the calls is that so you said this was 2016, Ben, in, in that area. In that area, I, I, in that, in that, that era, it's 15, 16, maybe. I mean, that was really yeah. doing this stuff for them. I think uh, Decal and Ribic are, in my opinion, are and Alex Ross are like the three modern age artists, cover artists. And this is just uh, proof right here. Beautiful. Yeah, Decal is an interesting one because um, so much of his early work was done on super independent books. Like a lot of these huge artists, like they, they kind of break with Marvel or DC, and their stuff is relatively accessible. Um, but Decal's already got some massive, massive bangers, right? That are out of reach, right? Something's killing the children. Um, um, God, I'm going blank on them. I mean, um, I mean, certainly the cover he did for um, Invincible Iron Man with Riri is is, is, a, is a modern classic. Um, it, but, but it, like chasing his earlier stuff, it's really, really, really tricky to find because uh, we're talking about books that maybe had 5,000 copies printed, right? Um, maybe. Um, so um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But it, it definitely makes it fun, um, but also frustrating. When you, when you identify something and you want it and you can't find it, man, it can drive you a little crazy sometimes. But uh, didn't, I, didn't, didn't the call just do oh, – sorry, Aaron. Um, didn't he just do the – that property that was rumored a chariot number one. He did yep. that. Whole, he, he did, did the, the cover A. The series, oh, yeah. he, he did the whole series covers. So sick. So sick. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what I was going to say was like, it was interesting messaging him. It was like, uh, when we were trying to figure out what his first work was, he wasn't even sure. Like he was like, I think it's either forgive me father or TS one Oh eight. I'm not really sure. And then he just kind of threw it up in the air. Yeah, so, you know, and I'll say this. I mean, looking at the dates of those books, I have identified a book. Hold on. I've got it right here. If we're going to go down the rabbit hole on this stuff. <laughs> um, nope, this is not even the right one. Um, I don't know where it is. But basically, I identified a book that, 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 he, that, that he did the cover for. Um, no, he didn't do the cover for it. I had a piece of his art on the cover, but I believe that that art that he oh. drew was like a digital comic of some sort. But that oh, came wow. out in like 2011, which predated, I think, that those other books that he had mentioned to you, Aaron. Okay. Um, so it's hard to connect the dots on some of this stuff. But that uh, that that TS101 book, I've been looking for it. And uh, another book I haven't even got a... Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. And good luck, like, even, like, trying to uh like search that on ebay it's oh, interesting yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it, like <laughs> well you got a lot of people that follow you ben i mean like the minute you start uh putting books out everybody is taking notice i mean i have i mean you've got me buying up copies of the call stuff i mean just and it's amazing like, you know when you look at the journey into mystery uh stuff that he did with sith and the way he drew her was just uh i'm like oh my god you know, this looks like an incentive variant. There's one with a full headshot of Sith, and and just uh, man, uh, if you get a Decal book, like uh, he doesn't sell you short. He he brings it with his art, and he puts everything into it. I mean, it's just you know, this is just a a, a issue two of a of an independent book. But man, I mean, he's giving you everything he has. I mean, yeah, just a brilliant, brilliant artist, man. And he varies his style quite widely, right? Yeah. It's not like he's a one-trick pony. I mean, he you'll see some some of his stuff and it won't look a lot like what he's done before. Like the forgive forgive me father number two, right? That that that, that is, you know. You ought to try and get him on, Ben, and, and interview him. That'd be that'd be a great show. I've reached out to him. I think he's I I think he's working around the clock. I'm, I'm not sure he's got the bandwidth back because he's not even doing many cons or anything anymore so uh, well he could talk to you while he's drawing <laughs> you know <laughs> i was surprised he even answered my question when i when i sent it to him to be completely honest but yeah. it was like really late at night so i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> right, don't be texting him at three in the morning there 
that, right. that's exactly yeah. Where's he, yeah. Where's, he <laughs> where's he from? Where's he from? Florida. He's from Florida, which okay. is where the Creature Entertainment guys were from. So that's where that's how they all got kind of got hooked up. Got it. All right. Uh, next. Okay. This was another um, Stein book. Um, Green Lantern, Red Lanterns, number 28. Uh, this is a combo pack variant. And I got to be honest, I am not fully sort of up to speed on the combo pack variants um, from DC. I know that they're, they're, they're fairly sought after. Um, I couldn't find any data for copies on the census for this book um, or any or any sales for this book. Um, but, but certainly if Stein uh let's uh let's me know that it's a ghost it, it's certainly a ghost and uh and this is such a ghost that it was even hard to find a picture of it but um um i, uh, I think i have it and i i was messaging you uh some of these combo packs i found it and i don't know what the hell i did with it it's around here somewhere but like i have it still in the in the poly bag yeah so so these combo pack books right you, uh, right below the number 28 there, if you see it on there, right, you see the right. green combo pack, right? And for this is for the viewers, I don't, right? So there'll be a, there's a version of this book that is identical, just doesn't have the combo pack little green rectangle up there with the word combo pack in it. So it look, uh, it'll look the same otherwise, um, but but it has that, that that combo pack in there. And then this particular one is uh, actually a key, near impossible to find. Yeah, it's actually a key yeah, too. Red daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. First appearance, red daughter of Krypton, and then uh, you know, as you know, Supergirl as the Red Lantern. Right. Um, and I believe is this a Billy Tan cover? Uh, I I thought it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it uh, is. Wow. Yeah. And 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 this is one of the later issues, correct? Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing, I mean, not uh, even without the combo pack, there's probably not many copies of this cover. <laughs> you you know, find. nobody talks about the combo packs, but man, they're, they're like tough to find like, uh, like newsstands and especially uh, with still having the poly bag. Now over time, what happens with that poly bag, it starts to disintegrate because of what that poly bag is made out of, you know, there's, but there's a, uh, we, we ought to get a collection of uh, some of these uh, combo packs that are really, really hard to find on our next one. But there's a, a lot of hidden gems with the combo yeah. packs. No, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the more of these lists I put together, the more books that pop up for us to talk about. So absolutely. Um, um, let's uh, let, let's keep it rolling. Okay, yeah. so this um, this is a book that I've talked about, um, or at least appears that I've talked about. Um, so um, most people who who follow me know that I'm a big fan of photo variant covers, um, and um, and most people who know me know that my favorite Marvel movie is uh, Winter Soldier, which I think Richie may agree with me on. Um, so um, th this cover uh, really sort of hits a lot of high notes for me. Um, but there's a subtle difference of this one versus the one that you may else you may the, the other one you may see. There's a comics pro version, which is still a ghost by most definitions. Um, this version, as you'll see, um, is the um, is the SWSX um, uh, variant, and I've only seen one copy of this book in my life, um, other than other than this one, and I, and I finally tracked this book down. Um, um, and the one that I saw was a legit one Oh, I'm not joking. I mean, it was, looks like it was jammed in the back of someone's goodie bag at, at the conference. Um, <laughs> oh, so, South by Southwest. Yeah. South by Southwest. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think there's necessarily a ton of comic collectors at this, at these conferences. So if they were given out, many of them probably didn't survive. Um, 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 so there's one copy of this listed on the census. And that copy is an 8.0 qualified. Um, so um, we're in this 41 copies of the Comics Pro version on the census, which is still super rare. You, you almost never see the Comics Pro version pop up either. But this, but this uh, South by Southwest version is, um, is, is by every definition a ghost. And my copy is right. Oh, I've got them both right here. So we can 
So the, here's my copy of it. I finally found it. And I and then and listen, I didn't find it for nothing. Um, but I, I'm not 100% sure the guy who sold it to me knew what the difference was. And this is the Comics Pro version, right? Almost wow. Like, oh, wow. Right? Nice. Um, but, the, but the Comics Pro, I, I, I think I've picked up two of these over time, the Comics Pro one. But this one, it's the only other, on the one I've seen. And it's, sorry, the, this one is, uh, I don't know, man. I might have a shot at a 9.8 on this thing. It's, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's wow. Like, ben, if you don't mind me asking, so did, did you get these books digging or did you, I mean find them online no, or I, I didn't get either one of these digging i got i got the i got the comics pro one um it was just like a winter soldier a lot on ebay way back for um um for like i don't know it's probably like 10 bucks for 25 bucks right so i mean it's not digging but it's the equivalent of ebay digging if you will so got it for relatively cheaply um this one somebody hit me up on instagram I said, hey, I know you like this book. I don't think anybody, the person who pointed it out to me, knew that it was the South by Southwest version of it. Um, and I and I paid I, I paid what would what would be fair value for the comics pro if it was the comics pro version. Um, but 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 given that it's South by Southwest, I think this is if anybody gives a shit other than me, I suppose um, you know could, could 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 go for more. But um, anyways, I'm I'm just happy to have it. Um, because. Yeah, I bet you a lot of people didn't even know it existed, you know, and that's a that's a great thing about putting lists together like this. Good now point, people, Joe. Yeah, now people won't pass it up if they find it. You yeah, know, you know who I, it existed? Stein. When I when I mentioned to him, it's like, holy shit, how did you find that? Right. So of course he he knew. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right, Joe. Most people are completely unaware. Yeah, of these you books. know, they could just you know, pass it through. But a lot of these photo variants are becoming tougher and tougher to find out in the wild, man. You know, it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to find that, that newsstand. I actually picked, end up picking it up. Um, that, that. What? Door. Yeah. Let me, I'll see if I can find it, but I bet a lot of people in what? Austin will end up like, um, uh, start digging in their back issues for this. Cause I mean, that, that's where the, that yes. will usually... yeah yeah but the fact that there was only one on the sense they could drive out there somebody. qualified um I, I was was was, was kind of crazy you saying nine eight or just on the entire census one on the entire census wow it, it was an eight oh that's a legit ghost <laughs> <laughs> nice now yeah. listen, there's a chance there's a chance <laughs> that because CGC is not perfect, that maybe they graded a couple of these as the Comics Pro version, and it's in that forty and one number. How, we, I, mean, I don't know. You, you never know, I guess. But, um, but I've looked for this book long enough to know that it's it's really really hard to find. Hey, Alrighty. so I, I I was gonna show you Ben. I found all these combo variants. Oh, nice. The Jim Lee uh, cover. So. The interesting thing is, you know how I was telling you, they're so old. I think these came out in 14. What you have, you see how the plastic starts to disintegrate from the... Holy shit, yeah, legitimately. Yeah, so, like, it, it's tough to find with a, a, a one with a plastic that hasn't broken up yet. Yeah, I mean, but, wow. you know. But these, man, these are so tough to find, and and I, I've got to check the census. But like, I think you're onto something, Ben, with the with the combo packs. The combo pack. With the, oh, I don't want to take any credit for that. That was Stein. That was Stein who pointed that one out. So um, all the credit goes to him on that. Okay, I I think this was another Stein book. Um, uh, um. So this is uh, Grendel Devil's Vagary. Um, there's there, there's no nine point eights of this book. Um, there's fourteen copies total on the census. Uh, three and nine six, eight and nine four. So this book is um, um, super tough in high grade, super tough in any grade apparently. Um, but um, you know Grendel kind of has a cult following, and um, and uh, and you know this this book is. Um, is one of the more difficult ones to come by. Um, I, I was completely sort of unfamiliar with it. 
I, I've never seen that book. Yeah, I mean, um, neither would I. Um, so I wouldn't even have known to look for it. But, yeah. uh, um, but you know, just something, you know, you, you could be digging in these uh, in these con boxes and uh, there it is because nobody, nobody knew to grab it because nobody knew that it was rare, right? So um, um, something to keep an eye open for me. Yeah. Who was the artist, do you know? I don't. I do not wow. know. Do you, cool do you think it's referring to the classical story of Grindel? Like maybe spawn off of that? It could be, Aaron. That could be. All right, let's see what we have next. It's a good point. Uh, this was another Stein book. Um, oh, yeah, Stephen Platt, bro. Yeah, so this is Stephen Platt. Um, so, um, you know, there's a typo on this. Um it was limited it said limited to 500 well there's two versions of this one right um the the original one that i found in stein correcting me on it had um the publisher over here um on the left side of the book below the v um the publisher information there uh this version is a hollow foil ver uh, variant the publisher isn't there um and uh, there's far fewer of them so so this version is is far fewer than 1500 I couldn't find any sales data on it at all, um, um, but a beautiful Stephen Platt um, cover and one that I really, really want now. Um, so this is going on the list of, 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 of ghosts I'll never have, but uh, I'm going to keep my eye open, my eye open for it. You, you know, it's but, funny. A lot of people don't know about Stephen Platt because he disappeared right at his, I, I wouldn't say his, his uh, height because we never really got to see him take it to the next level and there was a uh, rivalry between him and McFarland and you had a camp with uh, Stephen Platt and you had a camp with uh, Todd McFarland and, and for a while there like you know there was people that saying that uh, that were saying that he was a better artist than McFarland and then for some reason he just stopped doing it I think he went into uh, movies and started doing art, art, art uh, for for movies, and he just stopped. Now, uh, I think over the last couple of years, he started doing uh, variant covers and things like that. But man, it's a shame we we never really got to see him develop through uh, comic books and see, uh, you know, because artists grow and they get better over time, and they like marinate and start to get better. Uh, and uh, you really never saw the the full fruition of of Stephen Platt. He did some great Moon Knight covers. Yeah, I mean, and he was super. That Moon Knight run that he did. I mean, all of those books yeah. still fetch a pretty a pretty nice price um, for the tail end of that Moon Knight run. Um, but uh, that's just a badass cover, man. Yeah, uh, really, really, really cool. Um, and uh, a book that uh, you know you always want what you can't have. So, anyways, this one's uh, on the list. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. Next, we've got. Uh, I don't know who put. I don't know if this one was Stein or not. Um, so this is uh, Critical Role Vox Machina Origins number one. Another book. This is a um, an em em Emerald City Comic Con uh, variant. Um, um, I don't get out there um, very often, so I certainly don't have this one. Um, who knows how many they were selling at that con? But uh, apparently, they don't. Um, they, they they don't pop up because um, um, uh, uh, you know couldn't find any any evidence of the book being sold any any time recently. Any anybody even familiar with this book? Heck no. I'm familiar with the title, just never seen the actual book. Very well, nice cover, though. Yeah. The, I mean, it looks like it's going for ten bucks. Do you know what year this came Fun. out? I I don't, Aaron. I do not. So, so Emerald City so, is in Washington, right? Seattle, Washington. Yeah, it's in, it's in Seattle. And what the interesting part about that is to me is that there's zero on the census, and CGC usually does on-site grading for that convention. That's true. Yeah. So I mean, I know from going like once a lot of people will, will buy up those exclusives for the for the con and then submit them right away to the on-site grading uh, i mean that might be just something like that's new and recent but 
even then, like, it kind of surprises me that no one would, you know, even if it's a low printed book, like if there's only like 10 of them or 50 of them, that it wouldn't go right to grading right away. That's a yeah, great apparently, point. Apparently yeah, nobody good point did it. Um, um, yeah, who knows yeah. what these books yeah. are? Yeah. Um, it, once again, this is the kind of book that you can just find, you know, just somewhere because nobody even knows because there's no sales data and nobody thinks there's, there's any value to it. Right. So you know, this, this could literally be, um, you know, a, a cover price book. Okay. Giant days. Number one. Uh, I didn't have a lot of data on this one. Um, uh, this is a one in 20. Um, and uh, there are only about 6,500 copies of this book ordered. Um, I think this was Tony's book, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, you know, I, I didn't have um, I, I didn't have any information on census data or sales data on this, um, but um, uh, but it's a book that does not uh, appear very often. But you know, this 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 giant days. I never read it, but it, but it definitely picked up a little bit of heat as the series went on. Did anybody here read it? No, no. But I just found one from a retailer. <laughs> trying to grab it. Um, it. So it's a it's a one in twenty. It's a grand variant. Um, is is Giant Days Oni Press? So there was something about this print run. I think Mel brought it up that this this run was done independently or this variant was done independently or there was something about this book that um um that made it particularly difficult to come by um um you know i wish i wish those guys were on because i don't have a lot of background on, on this book personally um um but um there was certainly a lot of chatter about it in the chat yeah i just tried to pick it up and it was sold out so <laughs> <laughs> it was 10 bucks like a real ghost you go to grab it and it's not there yeah <laughs> okay oh, wow. uh, um so lights camera jungle number one this is a shannon mayer um kickstarter comic um you know these you saw, these kickstarter books are, are can be super tough to come by but they every once in a while they poke their heads out I couldn't find anything on this book. Um, it was limited to 200. Um, certainly a, uh, a cool cover. So this is what we're showing here. This is actually sort of the, um, the Kickstarter promotion um, for this book. Um, and, uh, and this is, you know, one of Shannon, Shannon Mary's better covers, in my opinion. I'm not always the hugest fan of everything that, that Shannon does, but, but this one is, is, is pretty sweet. Um, but, um, I don't know if it was one of these things where the Kickstarter didn't get off the ground and the books were never shipped, but it is a ghost I and mean, there's nothing out there for this. Yeah. I, I love, uh, Shannon Mayer's artwork, man. He's phenomenal. I mean, he's, he's one of those up and coming guys. Like, uh, he just reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, when Campbell and, and Michael Turner were coming up and just something so fresh. Uh, he he's done some great like Gamora covers and yeah, his Gamora. He there is a Gamora of his. Yeah. That I'm a big fan of the, the the realism of this one is is outstanding. Yeah. Um, 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 but a book you know I have never seen, but I would certainly grab this if I ever came across it. I'm interested to know a little bit more about Kickstarters and how to get involved with them. Yeah, I mean. I mean, it, it, they're basically raising money uh, to fund the project, right? So they're going to, and, and there's, I, I haven't been involved with one on the comic side directly with other Kickstarter stuff, but, um, you know, there's different amounts of money that you can, um, that you can give to qualify for, for, for certain things. And once they're gone, it's gone, right? So even if there's still money left to be raised, but let's say people, um supported at a certain price level like you know that that giveaway or whatever that promotion is can be gone and no longer available so um 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 so that was it i i don't know if this book is actually even 
it must be available. If Stein put this on here, it must be out there somewhere. Like I was going to say, could this have they, they, they did the Kickstarter, but they haven't produced the book yet. I don't think he put something on there like that. But um, um, For, right, and that that's kind of the whole thing about Kickstarters too. That you know, sometimes like the project doesn't get enough funding, so the rewards never get published or put out. But it also makes me wonder, like you know who is actually, you know, funding this? Like, could it just be like friends and family, um, you know, or, you know, people that really believe in this project or whatever, and just want to see, it, you know, take off the ground. So, I mean, I don't feel like it's always just comic collectors that are getting in on the ground start of something. Um, I've done like two Kickstarters this past year or over the past year. Uh, one was for, uh, Todd McFarlane with the Spawn toys. And then the second one was for Garrett Gunn, his uh, uh, Good Boy comic, um, which is a parody of uh, of John Wick, where the dog lives. And then it's a John Wick story with a dog instead. So I thought all. it was pretty, yeah, yeah. So I thought it sounded pretty funny. And yeah. yeah. I will say they're hard to find. So this is the call Kickstarter that I found. Um, I wasn't part of the Kickstarter, <laughs> but I found it just looking around. And um, there's his classic signature down there. Um, but like this book, and this this book is not in great shape um, by any means. Um, but um, but I've never seen any other even like hint of, of, of this book out there. Um, and and recently, Adam Hughes had a Kickstarter project that the book went absolutely. Oh yeah. Great. Um, what was the name of that book? Um, I forgot. It was beautiful, but yeah, um, it was but anyway, expensive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't think the Kickstarter itself was that crazy, but the book it's the, in, in, in the secondary market yeah. just, just went bonkers. Um, uh, so an interesting place to maybe look for opportunities. You just kind of have to have your antennas up because sometimes these Kickstarter projects don't always um find their way to you, if you will. Right. So um. Um, right. You know, you just kinda... Yeah, yeah. Because some could be a week, some could be a month. Like it's yeah. just like, and it, I think it's a good place for up and coming artists or writers to start. Honestly, like if you know no publisher is like willing to take that take on that project, they can self publish this way. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, and you end up with with a with you know it could be a you know a super exclusive uh, comic book. So. Um... That's what this book was. Um, if you see it, by all means, grab it. I looked around for it. I couldn't find anything. All right. Um, next on the list. Uh, Oof. This is the, yeah. So this is Art Germ, right? This is the Lady Death, uh, Nightmare Symphony Number One. Uh, this. So there's a few different versions of this cover. Uh, the one that I have here is um, a holofoil cover. Um, the last sale of this book, um, was for $430, um, back in March of 2019. Uh, so coming up on two and a half years ago now, um, it was limited to 77 copies. Um, there are 14 9.8s on the census out of the 20 total books. I would point out that there are six nine nines. So this book holds up very well, apparently. Um, Probably the cardstock, right? Cardstock. Well, this is a hollow foil, so maybe it's like. Oh something yeah, yeah. Heavier, or so, you know, it's something heavier. Um, yeah. This cover is so in demand that the prints of this damn cover go for fifty or sixty bucks, or maybe more. So, um, this is beautiful. I would love to have this. There's um, there's three different covers. They're all limited to seventy seven. I just put this one on here. Um, there's a hollow foil. There's this version that's um, regular cover and like a black and white version of it. Um, all, all damn near impossible to get. Um, um, it just uh, looks expensive, man. You know, it does, man. It looks super expensive. I'll say this. You know, I, I'm not a big lady death collector, um, but I do like artists. And every artist you come across has done a lady death cover. Like every every one. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. The call did one that was limited to 150 copies. So, you know, that book could be on this list. Um, or maybe it was 125. I forget. It was a really low, low number. Um, um, 
there's several artists, other artists that I like. I end up buying their 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 Lady Death covers, but 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 this one is, um, you know, Art Germ is fantastic, and this and this is uh, this is one of his best, in my opinion. And right. and then Stanley Lau fans are just like crazy, like you know what I mean. Like yeah. once they get one, they have to have them all. It seems like yeah. I mean I've seen it before. Like there's just something yeah. about like Art Germ covers that people like gravitate towards. And there's some really top an ones. Archer box. Um, there's some indie stuff that he's done that, that that's really tough. Actually, I think we have another copy, another one on this list that's really tough to come by. Um, um, but let's let's keep moving and see if we can get to it. All right. Okay, so this um, this is a book I hunted for a long time, um, and I don't know what it is about this cover, but it really resonates with me. Um, this was a diamond retailer summit um sort of exclusive cover um there are four copies on the census uh two and 9.8 uh the last 9.8 sale was um you know coming up on three years ago now for for 84 bucks um i've got a raw copy of the, a copy of this book as far as this i don't know what this means but this is the because i don't read enough archie even though i i do like it this is the first modern appearance of sabrina I don't know what that means. Um, the character seems to have been around for a long time. Yeah. Every time we look at this book, that's what they tag it as, is the first modern appearance of Sabrina. Um, I just, there's a lot going on in this cover that really works for me. There's a, a couple of versions of this. There's, um, um, there's sort of the regular um, variant, which is also um, um, not um, easy to come by, easier than, easier than this but but still a book worth grabbing um and then they just did her on her broom um for some um it might have been a con exclusive i'm, I'm forgetting but it, it's like a, just a green background um but but but, this, but of all the versions this is the toughest one to come by and um you know i really just i really i really really enjoy it i i didn't catch who the artist was but it, i mean it kind of looks like an oh. adam hughesy cover uh, she, you know, it's a female artist. She did those Josie and the Pussycat covers that are really good. Um, oh, okay. I'm going. I'm going blank on it. Uh, I should have put it on the slide. Um, yeah, it's a cool cover. Very clean. Yeah, my Simple. Number. But I do have to say, I definitely enjoyed the Riverdale series and the uh, Sabrina series, and I wish they like had that crossover like they do in the comics. They teased it, right? It just never, yeah. just never it just never happened. Um, um, but yeah, no, I I was so excited when I finally when I finally found this book. Thanks for coming. <laughs> nice one, nice one, man. All right, uh, next book on the list: X Files, number one, one in ten. Um, so the last graded sale I could find for this was a CBCS 9.6 for 325 bucks uh, back in April of 2020. Um, no copies on the CGC census. Um, so IDW one in tens, um, you know, as a matter of practice, whenever I can get my hands on one of their one in tens, I just buy it regardless of what it is. I buy it um, because, you know, IDW books aren't heavily ordered. Um, I don't know what the story was with, with, was with X Files at this point, uh, but apparently nobody was even ordering ten copies, seeing as that this thing is almost impossible to find. But uh, X Files has its own sort of cult following, and uh, you know this is a um, uh, this is a uh, a cool book to uh, to add to your collection if you see it. This is also the sort of book that just might be hanging out in in in, in the variant, ten, the ten dollar variant. Uh, bin, right so so something maybe to uh to keep an eye open but uh also another stein book um he's got some real uh s some real tough ones on this list so when i when i do like my pre-ordering um you know day of foc or the weekend before you know it's always listed you know dark horse first the first place i go to is idw and i look at the look at the one in tens no brainer. That's a great tip. Anytime I see these one uh, IDW one in tens, just pick them up. And this is one that I will definitely be looking at in the future. 
Yeah, cool one for sure. All right, next. So I, remember, I, um, I think I remember seeing, hearing about this book when it came out. Um, it's shocking that there's none, none of the census, but this is a, um, a G.I. Joe's Special Missions number three, another IDW book, one in 10. We were just talking about that formula before. Um, I couldn't find any sales, couldn't find anything listed. Um, um, but, uh, this covers cool. Anybody who knows the GI Joe carrying cases, um, this one is sort of almost like a, a toy story, uh, vibe to, uh, you know, to, 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 to that, to that theme. But, um, GI Joe is hot as, as hot as it is one, one of the, one of the hotter properties. Um, you know, this book is, um, um, one that's uh, sure to be sought after for a long time. Yeah. Speaking of Richie's formula, you know, I kind of took a play from that book and I, I did that for a GI Joe 282 uh, to get that one in 10 incentive um, through um, a, a friend of the show, uh, through Lucas, through his drunken pool box. And, you know, that, that book was delayed and which made it kind of interesting. Like, so prices shot up right away. Uh, but I th think they've kind of cooled down at this point since like, you know, more stores started getting them. Uh, but, you know, it was it was one for the PC. Yeah, I mean, one theme of this uh, of these ghosts that we're talking about on the show is is um, ratios on books that don't have a lot of copies ordered, right? I mean, there's something to be keeping in mind. Sometimes it's just worth buying them, uh, tucking them away because they could turn into something, right? Um, as print count, if if you ever see a ratio offered on a book that's never ordered, might be worth maybe grabbing that book um you can probably find it at ratio somewhere um uh, before it disappears but um all right well, very next one. very nostalgic before you move on this one oh yeah absolutely right for any of us kids from the uh, from the 80s yeah totally all right this is the other art germ cover um that i was talking about and uh so I had hunted this book for a long time. And um, the first time I heard about it was from Stein. He had mentioned it on the Hot 10 way back when. Um, anyways, this is fly number one. Uh, this is a cover B. Um, I couldn't find any sales data on this in 9.8. Uh, there's one nine eight on the census, seven total. And you know this book um, has a couple of things going for it. One, it's a number one. A two, it's art germ, but it's also a very subtle AF-15 homage. Um, and, uh, you know, there are people who just collect those. Um, but uh, I found this uh, out in the wild for 20 or $25. Um, so it is a ghost, but I think a lot of people don't don't know that, obviously. And, uh, uh, yeah, a cool book to have for the collection. It's one of those wins. You're like, yes, I got it. Um, but uh, one maybe to keep an eye out for. Um um, it can go for a lot if people list it for a lot, but it's um, it doesn't have to. I mean, I, I think this is one of them that you can find relatively relatively cheaply. If you find any of those shops that are heavy on Zenoscope, you know, that might be a place where, you know, there's some stores that don't have any other stuff, some stores that have a ton of it. You know, the stores that order heavy, maybe that's where you, where you find this book. All right. This was sleepy's um pick if i'm not mistaken ultimates number one art adams one in 50. uh last 9.8 sale we saw was earlier this year for 350 bucks so pretty hefty price tag you know i would have a guess there are more of these books out there um uh, that said there are 29 total copies on the census 19 in um in 98 with a total of 61,000 copies ordered so um, while that 61,000 may sound like a lot, once again, if we take our math of the 2,000 roughly comic shops in the country, um, they're roughly ordering about 30 copies each. So, uh, you know, most of them weren't qualifying for 50 copies of this book. People were probably ultimated out by this point. Ultimates had had so many different versions, you know, 61,000 copies for a number one is relatively low for Marvel, to be perfectly honest, for, for a major title. Um, so, so this one, um, didn't show up in a lot of shops. Um, uh, you can see this out there now and then, um, uh, it tends to, uh, fetch a pretty good price. Um, but this is a great art Adams cover. Um, I really like this. I wish I had it. 
plus it's the key in the guts right. too, I believe, right? It's the first um Anika's um partner IO. IO. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean this is a sought after book and uh <laughs> I will definitely be looking for this cover. I love Galactus. <laughs> I'm just a Galactus fiend. No, Galactus is awesome. Mar Adams is awesome. Like this has everything mm -hmm. going for it. Have have you all seen the new um uh, Hasbro Galactus action figure from Gla or Hasbro Labs? Not yet. Is it the huge one? Yeah, it's 32 yeah. inches tall. It has like oh, LED wow. lights on it. And it's like a it's kind of like their version of Kickstarter through Hasbro. And it's like it's like four hundred dollars to buy in. And like, yeah, it's it's impressive. Like to be a kid nowadays and get those kind of toys, right? Oh man. <laughs> it's a torture though, man. That's that's a big ticket, right? I mean, the the the, the those are the kids who are in their forties basically, right? And then they buy those. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next on the list. Okay, so this, um, you know, I, I don't have this book. I've never seen this book. Um, I, I, I've read about this book. This, some people argue, is Adam Hughes's most difficult cover, A Stranger's Tale number three. There's no sales data for this book. Um, one sold raw. Um, Matt DeVoe had it on... Um, on his shakers list. And I forget it was a big price tag. Um, this book actually, people didn't even know it existed, right? People thought that the series was canceled after issue number two. And then just recently, like a copy of this book showed up somewhere. So um, who knows um, exactly what happened there, but um, uh, this is um, by every definition, a ghost. Um, um, I mean, when, when, when something happens like that and you know i'm i'm actually getting a book from mel that was kind of like that um um it was uh the gun number three which i guess it never was a neverly officially published but mel ha happens to have a copy it tells you everything you need to know about mel he's got stuff that never even came out um um but uh maybe there's a similar similar story for this book adam hughes being one of the most sought after artists in the game this certainly this makes this book wildly sought after and then who knows maybe it's out there in some back issue bin because no dealers know that this book even exists yeah i feel like it, it could be like one of those you know where a publisher or maybe even like an artist proof like leaked out and someone got it or like maybe like some ultra fan like had or, it and then yeah or a test run maybe or something who knows i mean I, yeah I, I don't know it'd be great to know what 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 the story was with that, but um, but 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 there has been a confirmed sale of this book, and I wish I'd had that I brought it up, but I, I want to say it was a big big number. If you're not watching and you're not reading Matt DeVoe's um, weekly um, um, uh, com uh, market recap, you're missing out. It's honestly the thing I look forward to the most week in and week out as far as comic content goes, and he covered this book um, um, in one of those um, a month or two ago, so. Uh, definitely go check those out. Uh, you'll do yourself a huge favor. I will co-sign on that one. Shout out to Matt DeVoe and Cover Price Boys. I look okay. forward not only to the uh, Week in Review list, but also every single night just past midnight, what were the most books trending the day before yeah. and the biggest price books trending the day before. On top of that, he's got the keys, hot books, rare variants, or rare gems. So shout out to Matt DeVoe and Cover Price. Yeah, coverprice.com, C-O-V-R, no E, C-O-V-R, price.com. If you're not using that resource, uh, you're missing out. Yeah, and uh, anyone watching the show, if you know the story behind this book, let us know. Like, leave a comment and like let us know the origin of why this book is a ghost. And I guess for any of the books that we've covered so far. Yeah, and also, um, th we're going to do more of these. If there are ghosts... Anybody watching that you guys have chased that um, that we haven't talked about, leave them. We will include them in the next um, next segment that we do on on books you can't buy anymore. So um, please leave them in the comments, and we'll go back. We'll make sure to grab those ideas, and we'll share them with everybody else uh, on, on on a future episode. And yeah. you can also contact me directly on Instagram 
uh, just just like it's spelled underscore d o one l a r underscore and also mr longshort ben is on instagram as well yeah i would probably leave ye alone he's got enough stuff to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we'll definitely give you a shout out all right absolutely all right let's get let's keep the list rolling uh resident evil number one this is a promo um copy that i don't know a whole heck of a lot about I do know that promo comics are co promo comics are something that I actively seek out and buy whenever I see. Um, I don't know the story behind this one um, uh, because this book doesn't really exist in anything I can find online. It's got to be another Stein contribution. Um, but uh, Resident Evil certainly has a, a large fan base. Uh, this was put out by Wildstorm, and. Uh, once again, this is the innocuous book that doesn't stick out. That's maybe we've all gone by in back issue bins because we didn't know to look for it. I mean, how many bins have you been through where there's like you just don't know what the book is? So um, it's hard to keep all of these, uh, you know, in the filing cabinet upstairs. But, um, um, you know, something that may be worth just keeping in mind. And next time you're digging and uh, you come across it and find yourself a little bit of gold. Well, and there's been a big uprise in video game comics too, like over the last couple of years, like it, it's just astonishing to see, like, I guess the, the world's kind of clashing together and a, a renewed interest in like, like comic collectors into video game comics. Yeah. So. You know, this may tie back to that um, South by Southwest as well, where, you know, if they're giving out comics at like video game type things, maybe like the video game people at that time, just didn't give a shit about the comic book that they got for free wherever it was given out. Right. So it wasn't saved. It was never cared for mm -hmm. and it was lost. Right. Um, you know, on mass because they didn't give a shit about it. So, you know, there could be something like that going on with, with this book. Um, who knows, but that's, that's why promo comics are, are definitely worth holding on to because a lot of them, you know, don't get kept. So, Okay. Um, All right. I think this is our last book. Oh, boy. Uh, I thought I had one. For, oh, you know what? That I take it back. That Resident Evil book was Carter's. That was Carter's book. Um, our main man, Mercenaut. Check out his channel if you're not watching it. Uh, some really good stuff on there. This book, Carter reached out to me and asked me to put on it. I couldn't find anything about it. Now, it did jog one thing. There was a raw copy sold that we talked about for 250 bucks, 250 bucks raw for this book. Uh, not long wow. ago. Um, so uh, wow. anyway, sorry about that, Carter. Um, it's getting late. I'm getting tired, but um, um, yeah, this was, this, this was Mercenot's pick. Miss you, Carter. All right. All right. And this last one, you know, I was talking about talking to Mercenot about this book on Friday. He had this book. Um, so, um, this is a Tululute, um, uh one in 50 on a book that had, le uh, let's just say, 6,000 copies ordered. You can do the math on that. Um, and uh, there's 198 on the census, four total copies. Um, you know, this book is beautiful. Um, uh, I was talking with another friend because I wanted to buy a copy of this um, just for the collection. And it was, you know, it was a fairly premium price that I was had a chance on this book. It was like, I would stay away. He's like, Dinesh may have a box of these stashed away somewhere. So you never know. So he's like, I would, I wouldn't pay that. I, I wouldn't pay that much for it. He said, um, he's, he's, it's uh, he's on the channel as well, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep him a mystery for the time being. But, um, um, but this, this cover is beautiful. It, it doesn't show up. Uh, I have no idea if Dinesh has a stash of these somewhere, but, um, um, you know, if it's truly a one in 50 on 6,000 copies ordered, who the hell was, if you're 6,000 total, who the hell was ordering 50 copies of this book? Um, uh, next to no one, most likely. So um, a book I really want. Um, uh, I think it's it, it's super cool, but um, um, a, a ghost in, in every sense of the word. All right. Well, that, that's it tonight. I, we appreciate you guys tuning in and, uh, and uh, going through that list with us. Um, um, you know, books that, that are really tough to, to track down are um, are um, a fun part of the hobby for all of us. And uh, hopefully, you guys find uh, 
uh, you know, some, some some books to chase on your own that, that nobody knows. But but share share your uh, your 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 ghosts in the comments, and uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about them next time we do this. Uh, thanks for tuning in.